Hi folks and welcome to today's video, herniated disc injuries. Now, if you enjoy the content I bring to you on a weekly basis, hit that subscribe button, okay? I produce a lot of content for those suffering out there with herniated discs, bulging discs, sciatic nerve pain, and many other lower back issues. If you want to get back on that road to recovery as quick as possible, then subscribe to my content. You will not miss a single video. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So folks, today I'm going to talk about herniated disc injuries, disc injuries in general. And I'm going to cover the most common ones that you may experience yourself. Um, if you've been diagnosed, your doctor says to you, hey, you know, we've got the MRI here, I think you've got a bulging disc, I think you've got a herniated disc. What does that actually mean? So I'm going to run through the most basic common disc injuries uh, that you may see. Um, you may have thought I was in somewhere tropical today with the waterfall <laughs> behind the intro video. I've got some... Uh, sort of like trees and the, the uh, rainforest behind me. It's not exactly, it's just a different gym today with a different background on it that I'm filming in. Uh, now, I've, I've gone old school today. Uh, I've got a flip chart here. Now, we've drawn out, this is a basic lumbar disc here. And I want to take you through the basic um, physiology of the disc. I'm not getting too technical. <clears throat> so, your disc essentially, um, the discs, they, are, they lie between your vertebra. Vertebra are the bones in your spine, okay? and they act as shock absorbers. They're majority of mainly uh, made of water, kind of elastic collagen type material, and they allow for some shock absorption uh, in your vertebra, between your, uh, in your spine. Now, <clears throat> the disc itself is made up of an outer circle here, these rings here. There's anywhere from 10 to 25, depending on uh, everybody's individual, how many fibers or sort of layers you will have, and these are quite tough cartilaginous type material. And inside of that, there is what's called the nucleus pulposus, and it's a, it's a jelly type substance in there. So you can imagine it's almost like a donut, this with a jelly donut, right? With this a gel stuff in the middle. Now here we've got, there's this, uh, there's a blue section here. This is your vertebra, okay? The bony, your bony spine. And the green area in the center here, that is your spinal column. So that's the, the nerves that run down the back, okay, from the come out, of course, of your neck there, run all the way down your spinal column, and then they branch off into your legs and such as well. So <coughs> here we have a sort of healthy disc. There's no deformation. Um, a couple of things to point out. Um, there's very little blood supply into this region. Um, the area where you do have some blood supply and some nerves um, innervating is on the outer side, outer rings of this annulus fibrosis. And the majority of the pain receptors they found are generally at the back, towards the rear of the disc, so closer to the spinal column, I guess, to our back, okay? So the backwards portion, not the frontal portion, the back portion of your disc. And they found them along the back side here and mainly up in this sort of what they call the posterior lateral section as well. So we've got that down. So quite often, one of the first things that you may encounter uh, for people is, oh, the doctor will say to you, you have a bulging disc. Okay, what is a bulging disc? So, I'm going to go old school here and flip over the, uh, the chart. So, a disc bulge. Essentially, the nucleus pulposus in the center has not been changed in any way. It's still contained within these structures here, these annulus fibrosis structures, but the disc itself will have sort of changed. Okay, the disc will actually have kind of maybe squashed out of place. It has basically become slightly displaced, but everything is still intact, okay? So it is bulging, it's slightly pushed out of its space. And this is usually the beginning stages um, of a potential herniation. Now, of course, you must always be aware that it doesn't always bring you pain whenever you have herniations or protrusions or, you know, disc injuries. They've done many, many studies, you know, did MRIs on people who had pain, did the MRIs, no bulging discs, and then as a control group, they did, you know, another 100 people, whatever, taken at random from the public, did MRIs. A lot of them had herniations, disc bulges, but no pain. So <clears throat> it doesn't always correlate, yeah? But just for today's video, the purpose is bulging disc is where your disc is deformed slightly and it's pushing out away from the normal where the vertebrae would be sitting. So if that's my vertebra here, okay? The disc is basically pushing away from the outside edge of my vertebra. It's bulging, yeah? Now, during the next stage, we're beginning to what's called herniations. So I'm just going to peel off our first herniation here. And this is a 
protrusion. So what's happened here, the nucleus pulposus has actually bulged, it has ruptured. It has pushed through some of those annulus fibers, okay? And the disc is now protruding. Now this may give rise to some pain because if you remember on our original um, picture, we've got the spinal column here, nerves are here. This could start to push on some of the nerves. <coughs> could be giving you back pain because it's close to the area where there's a lot of pain receptors. It could also be giving you some sciatica pain because the, if it's the L5S1 down in the lower back region, it could be causing you some nerve pain there. So if you've been diagnosed with a protrusion, this is what we're looking at here, okay? The nucleus pulposus is still contained, it's still not burst out, okay? Um, that comes next. So after protrusion, we get extrusion. So here, this is sort of definitely, this is the main symbol you'll see here, a sign. It's like a little mushroom section of the nucleus pulposus has burst out of this annulus fibers. Now, it can be what's called contained, so it can still be within the last rim of the annulus fiber, or uncontained, which actually burst out of the annulus fiber. But it's fully ruptured, you've got it fully extruding out, <coughs> normally causes pain in the back, of course, and in uh, potential nerves, like the sciatica nerve as well. So, you're going from protrusion, typical next stage, if you injure yourself further, is extrusion yeah now myself when I had my bad um, low back disc injuries originally it was a small bulge a small protrusion I got I, I felt better basically um, <clears throat> less pain I went and exercised hard again made it worse and I sense that I created an extrusion okay I, I basically increased the, the the size of herniation by doing work when of course it wasn't properly healed yeah that was pain-free and that was the mistake I made. Now, what can also happen is after extrusion, you can have what's called sequestration. Now, this is where you actually, a piece of the nucleus pulposus actually breaks off. So it breaks through all the annulus fibers, breaks out of the disc, and then a small piece will break off. And it can go into the spinal canal, can go down the side here, it can go up or down, or it can just stay beside the original exit zone. So if somebody says, oh, you've got a sequestered disc, that's what it means. It means a piece of your nucleus pulposus has actually um, broken away from the original herniation. Now, what's interesting is when they've done studies on uh, what's called disc reabsorption, where the disc will reabsorb back into the disc space, <coughs> excuse me, it tends to be those that <clears throat> have a sequestered disc, meaning the greater the disc injury, the more likely it would reabsorb and the faster it would reabsorb. This is generally down to the inflammatory response of the body is greater because the significance of the injury is greater as well. So if you do have a sequestered disc, there's a high probability it will reabsorb if you undertake the correct, of course, rehabilitation, uh, the correct you know, work <coughs> to basically get you to that point, of course, then you may actually recover much faster than somebody who does have a bulging disc, for example, yeah? Now, something else that you may hear people say to you is, oh, you've got a tear in the annulus fibers. Now, these were the annulus fibers, okay, we talked about earlier. So I'm gonna bring us back to our original picture to have a proper look at what the annulus tears mean as well. So here we are back at our start disc again. Now, People often say, oh, you know, you've, you've been told you've got an annular tear, annulus fiber tear. So this is our annulus here. So a tear generally means that there has been some uh, fissure, some little tear can, you know, in this tissue itself, yeah? Now, typically most tears, um, they tend to happen from the inside out, okay? And typically what will happen is when you have a tear, small tears, it's normal with aging as well. <clears throat> if you remember, I said a lot of the pain receptors are here towards the back, okay? So if you do have a tear in this region, it will be painful, okay? It'll be sore. You have maybe a small tear in this region. People tend not to feel much at all. You can see it on the MRI, but very rarely will there be pain. But what can happen over time is if we get a tear at this 
posterior area here, and the tear starts to get towards that back region. Then, of course, some of the nucleus pulposus can actually start to creep out of this tear here and eventually start to push on some of those nerves at the back, causing pain. So, it is fair to say as well that you can have annular tears, but no disc herniation, no prolapse or no damage to the actual nucleus pulposus. However, when you have a, a protruding disc, an extrusion, or protrusion or sequestered disc, which of course means that the material has gone out here, and in case of sequestration has come off, then yes, you will have, of course, an annular tear. Yeah, so you essentially <coughs> can't have a herniated disc um, extrusion, sequestration, without, of course, having an annular tear. So the two go together. However, you can have an annular tear without having a herniated disc. Okay, a lot of people have asked me that question. It's just to clear that up as well. That yes, you can have an annular tear with no herniation, but if you do have an annular tear, just be aware that it could lead in later life if you don't, you know, take um, action now by doing some, you know, rehabilitation work. It could lead later to a potentially herniated bulging disc. Yeah, so that's why it's really important to get as much, you know, core work, um, strengthening work, of course, to take the stress off of your disc, especially as we get older. Um, it is one of the things I push very, very hard in my uh, course, the, I do a 21 day rehabilitation course. It's actually gonna flash up on the screen there for you can go and check it out. It is www.bashbackpain.com forward slash course. It's a 21 day rehabilitation course designed to get you back on your feet, take you back out of that pain zone, get you to a much significantly decreased pain area so you can rehabilitate yourself and get going once again. Now, one thing about this annular tear, which is very, very important. If you look here, so we've got my annular tear, we've got our disc material, let me get that so you can see, sitting out here. Now, quite often, when you go for, if you go for spine surgery, okay, so we've got the tear here, here we go, it's the tear. Microdisectomy, disectomy, they go in and they remove this disc material, okay, just chop it off and it's gone. However, most of these surgeries do not repair the annulus, <clears throat> and that takes 12 months, sometimes up to two years, for it to recover properly. And this is one of the reasons that I've quite often got a high um, rate of re-injury and re-herniation after disectomies, microsectomy surgery, is because you remove this area of the disc which has been protruding, that might have been touching on the nerve, so now you've, you're instantly pain-free, almost overnight, However, the annular tear is still there, it's still open. So unless you get into a good rehab program very quickly, that you're strengthening that core to take the stress off the discs, yeah, then the chance of re-injury is very high because now, of course, this is an open wound, yeah? It takes a long time for this to heal over. And actually, uh, next week's video, I'm actually gonna go over um, the general healing times for a herniated disc, and I'll touch on this a little bit more, yeah? Guys, listen, I hope today's video has been useful, educational. Um, if you get any questions, comments at all, you want to reach out to me, hit me up in the comment section down below. You can always hit me up in my email. It's also in the uh, description down below as well. Don't forget to like and share this video. And of course, subscribe and you'll be notified of more content when I upload it. Okay, guys, have a great day and I'll see you next time.